Welcome to Octane Vein. In this episode, I'm finishing off the last big job needed to get the BMW ready for the MOT, and that is sorting out the front brakes. Now when I bought the E21, it had already been upgraded to Volvo 4-pot front calipers. Unfortunately, one of them was always a bit sticky, so once I'd finished the roll cage and was getting it ready for the MOT at the end of last year, I actually replaced those front calipers for rebuilt units. Now, they've only done 5 miles, because of obviously what happened to the spindle, so it would seem sensible to try and reuse those. But, because of the work that I did to the spindle, upgrading to E36 front hubs, that means I'm also using E36 front discs. The diameter is bigger and also the offset's bigger, so I can't just mount the Volvo calipers the way they were before. That means I'm going to have to make an adapter bracket. But if I'm going to go to all the effort of making an adapter bracket, I want to make sure that I'm using the right calipers. So I'm going to investigate a couple of other options and just see what is going to be the best choice. So having done some research, I've come to the conclusion that I've got three options. The first is to use the Volvo calipers, they're freshly rebuilt and they're a big upgrade compared to what the E21 came with from the factory. The second option is to use the E36 caliper. Now I'm using E36 discs, so I know that the pad contact area is correct for the disc. And if they were good enough for the E36, which is a more modern, bigger, heavier car, then they're definitely going to be okay for my little E21. And the third option is to go for a big performance upgrade and use something like a Brembo caliper. Now Brembo have a large range of OE and aftermarket calipers, so there's a lot to choose from. But I want to use something a little bit more modern and go with a radially mounted caliper. What that means is a traditionally mounted caliper would have the bolts coming in from the side, whereas a radial caliper has the bolts coming in this way. And what that does is actually creates a much stiffer assembly, so there's less movement in the caliper, and that results in better brake pedal feel and better brake performance. So I've done a little bit of research and found that the Alpha 159 was actually fitted from the factory with Brembo 4-pot radial calipers. So I'm going to try and get a hold of a pair of them and then decide which ones to use. So here I have the three calipers laid out next to each other. So this is the Volvo caliper that was already on the E21 when I bought it. This is the OE E36 single piston caliper and then this is the Alpha 159 Brembo 4 pot. The size of it is a bit of a concern because I'm only planning on running 16 inch wheels and the E36 disc is 285 285mm uh, so it could be a bit tight under my rims. So the only way that I'm going to find out if they're actually going to fit is to create models of them and add them to the assembly that I've got in CAD of the suspension already because I've already got the hub and the disc so it's not that much extra work just to create models of these put them into the assembly and then I can really check all the clearances With the existing E21 setup with the Volvo 4 pots, the calipers are mounted using two M12 bolts screwed into the threaded holes in the knuckle plate. Replacing the E21 disc with the E36 disc, we can see that the caliper is nowhere near in the right place. Moving the caliper to the correct position for the E36 disc shows the gap between the knuckle plate and the mounting surface of the caliper is 5.5mm, which is not thick enough for an adapter bracket. Also, the mounting holes don't line up, but they do overlap enough that will cause a problem. Even with rotating the caliper around the disc to get clearance to the mounting holes, the 5.5mm gap means the bracket would have to mount to the outside surface of the knuckle plate, which would compromise its stiffness. 
These points, in addition to the fact that the Volvo pads are not tall enough to contact the whole braking surface of the E36 disc face, means the Volvo calipers are not a viable option. Next, the Brembo caliper is brought into the assembly. The centre plane of the caliper is aligned to the centre plane of the disc. The two axes are aligned to each other. And finally, the orientation is fixed. The radially mounted bolt holes can be seen on the inboard side of the caliper. Bringing the M14 bolts into the assembly shows exactly where the material for the adapter bracket would need to be. The lower bolt is actually interfering with the knuckle, and it is clear that there isn't enough room for the top bolt to have sufficient material surrounding the thread without having to make serious modification to the knuckle plate. Rotating the caliper about the spindle axis improves the situation slightly, however the adapter bracket would then become complex and expensive. The size of the caliper is also a concern under the 16 inch rims, so before any work is done on the adapter, the clearance must be checked. Now the 16 inch rim has been brought into the assembly, the amount of interference between the wheel and the caliper can be seen, and the Brembo calipers are also not a viable option. That leaves only the E36 caliper, which is brought into the assembly correctly positioned to the disc. It is immediately obvious that the mounting holes are much better spaced apart to maintain sufficient material around the holes in the adapter bracket, and the distance between the two mounting surfaces measures 8.7mm. The bracket needs to be made from 10mm steel plate in order to be strong enough to take the increased forces from running larger brakes and slick tyres on track, which means the caliper will be 1.3mm too far outboard. However, the disc can be spaced away from the hub by this amount in order to keep it running centrally inside the caliper. This means the bracket can be cut from 10mm plate and be kept relatively simple, so I check whether there is any advantage to rotating the caliper about the spindle axis. The piston casing soon collides with the knuckle plate and there is no great gain to be had in hole spacing so it will be left parallel to the suspension strut. Clearance to the 16 inch wheel has to be checked, so it is brought into the assembly. As a general rule of thumb, you should leave a 10 mm gap around any moving parts. Measuring all the clearances, there is pretty much 10 mm of clearance all around the caliper, so the E36 caliper does fit and is the final choice for the E21. The next job is to create the adapter bracket. To create the CAD model for the bracket, a new blank part is created which turns the rest of the assembly grey. The relevant geometry of the assembly that the bracket interacts with is copied into the part by selecting each individual surface. This includes the four axes for the mounting holes, the surfaces of the caliper that the bracket will clamp to which are raised from the main caliper body, the surfaces of the knuckle plate, and finally the surface of the caliper piston casing. The part is then opened by itself, showing the geometry that has just been copied from the assembly. A plane is created on the caliper mounting surfaces, and the axes and the piston casing are selected so they can be referenced by the sketch which defines the shape of the part. This sketch starts with a simple rectangle, large enough to contain all four mounting holes. Clearance to the piston casing is then included in the bracket. The dashed circle seen here, which was created by the surface copied from the assembly earlier, is used to create a larger circle. This circle is made larger to allow for tolerances to ensure the bracket never hits the piston casing. The unwanted sketch lines are then trimmed away. Circles for the four bolt holes are drawn on top of the referenced axes and given the relevant dimensions for the M12 bolts. 12.5mm for a clearance hole, and 9.9mm for holes to be threaded. The sketch is then closed and material is extruded 10mm to give the part thickness. The reference geometry is hidden, and the part coloured green so it can easily be seen in the assembly. 
The bracket is not yet finished, but this shows the basic principles of how to create it. An FE analysis is run to check any potential weaknesses. The knuckle is constrained as it would be in the car, and a 10 kN force is applied downwards onto the caliper to replicate the force exerted on the pads under heavy braking. The FE software divides the assembly into smaller volumes to create a mesh, shown here, and the computer calculates the stresses in each individual segment in order to determine where the peak stresses are. These are then displayed graphically. The displacement of the parts is highly exaggerated by the software and is not representative of how much the parts will move in real life. The results have to be interpreted carefully as they are only as good as the parts that have been modelled and the data that has been inputted by the user, which will never represent real life perfectly. Although there are several areas flashing blue, the only areas of concern are these patches where the knuckle plate joins to the strut. A small plate has already been welded in, however it's clearly not providing sufficient stiffness to the caliper mounting. A larger plate can easily be welded in, which will significantly increase the strength and therefore reduce the stress in this area. It will also reduce the stress shown lower down at the base of the strut. Although highly exaggerated, the graphical displacement of the parts does highlight one flaw in this design, and that is that the two sets of two bolts mounting the bracket and the caliper create axes for the caliper to rotate about. This can be seen when viewed from above. Adding a third bolt offset from this axis would eliminate this, but there's no space to do this. The adapter bracket can however be modified to bring the material rearwards towards the spindle and welded along that edge, which will triangulate the bracket, giving it much more stiffness. As the caliper is an OEM part and only has two holes from the factory, there's no need to change that. There is no problem with welding the bracket to the strut as the caliper is still removable. Before the bracket is ordered in 10mm steel plate, a prototype is 3D printed so the caliper can be test fitted to the car to confirm the geometry is correct. I would wanted to buy a 3D printer for a while and this was a good excuse to finally bite the bullet and buy one. I am genuinely quite excited about this. This is the first part that I've had off the 3D printer and I have to say I'm really impressed with it. It's only in the PLA material, but the infill that I've used is obviously really effective because the part is really stiff and it's really lightweight. So obviously it's just for prototyping, but it's a lot better than I was expecting and it's not even in any of the engineering materials that you can get for the printer that I've got. So they'll be coming later, but for now this is just a mock-up just so I can check the, the fitment of it. Prior to fitting the bracket to the caliper, the two inner holes that mount the bracket to the knuckle plate need to be threaded as the bolts must be inserted from the inboard side of the car. The holes in the knuckle are already threaded for mounting the existing calipers, so the bracket is held against the knuckle plate in order to get the threads to line up. A tap or thread tapping tool is used to cut the threads onto the inside of the hole. This is why the two inner holes were dimensioned 9.9mm earlier. The tap is wound into the existing threads and then as the 3D printed bracket is held tightly against the knuckle, the tap is rotated into the plastic to cut the thread. Once the bracket has been made out of metal, the threads in the knuckle plate will be drilled out, but this must not be done until I am absolutely sure that this bracket arrangement is going to work. When cutting a thread into metal with a tapping tool, you should wind it back after every full turn to allow the swarf to clear, but I don't bother here as it's only cutting into plastic. Once the tapping tool is fully through the material, it is wound back and a bolt is screwed into the hole to hold the bracket in place. A pair of grips is used to clamp the bottom of the bracket against the knuckle plate as the lower hole is threaded. Again, the tap is run all the way through the hole and then backed out. The second bolt is fitted and nipped up with the spanner and the caliper is fitted with the two remaining bolts. The first bracket that was 3D printed wasn't quite right, but after the CAD model was updated and a second bracket printed, the caliper sits in exactly the correct position. This shows that this brake setup does work and that the bracket can now be made in 10mm thick steel plate to mount the calipers permanently. Make sure you subscribe because in part 2 I get the brackets made out of metal, fit and weld them to the car and fit the calipers for the final time. 
I also make up a set of custom braided brake hoses to connect them. If you're subscribed, then you'll get notified of when that episode is uploaded. If you have any comments, please do leave them below because I appreciate your feedback. And as always, thanks for watching and look after each other.